So let's start with our topic. Uh, for the whole day, our topic it's all about the gyro compass, compass errors, variation, <coughs> deviation, and celestial LOP. But in order for you to have an LOP or line of position, you should have calculated at least two intercepts. That is as per our term. SMS. And of course, I'm going to teach you how to use, <coughs> what is this? Why is it called sextant? Nobody knows. I know, because before, historically, sextant is just reaching until 60 degrees. Okay? It has an arc of only up to 60 degrees. But now it can reach 130. Okay? So let's start first with determining compass error. <clears throat> so at the end of the sessions, participants shall be able to calculate gyro error, magnetic error, variation, and deviation. GN, what is deviation? It's an error causing an error on your magnetic compass by the ship's magnetism. What about the uh, variation? Mark Hill. What about variation? What is variation? Like, help Mark Hill. What is variation? <coughs> Awesome. No, it's the Earth's magnetism. So you add those two, variation plus deviation, that is your total or your compass error. Okay? Compass error. Okay, calculate gyro error, magnetic error, variation, deviation. Determine gyro error by ABC method. Okay? Using Norris tables and nautical almanac. Determine gyro error by amplitude. What is amplitude? Janil. Oops! No, no, I will not call the vertical friend. Ramon! <coughs> what is the amplitude? You are excused today. I don't have idea. You have no idea? Jumi? What is amplitude? If there is an azimuth, what is amplitude? I'll give you a tip. Where does the sun rise? And where does the sun set? Did I study this subject? Amplitude? It rises from the Where does the sun rise? Ramon? West. West? Time! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Assignment, takes it. Assignment, tell me what is amplitude later on. And where does the sun rise and sun sets, okay? 
And of course, write on Compass Error Logbook. On board, you will encounter writing in a Compass Error Book. And this book, actually, it is being uh, scrutinized by the third parties, such as betting inspectors, port state control officers, okay, third parties, and even the masters during the navigational audit. So if you happen to fill it up and something is wrong, then probably it can be an observation against the vessel. That is why today I am going to teach you how to calculate gyro error and write on compass error book. <coughs> So, these are the terms that you use, that are used in calculation, okay? Declination, it's the angular distance of a point north or south of the celestial equator. Meaning to say, it is uh, the synonym of the terminology from terrestrial, it's the, the parallel of latitude. But on the celestial term, it is the declination. Right ascension, astronomical equivalent of longitude. Uh, of an object measured eastward from the first point of Aries, also called the vernal equinox. Okay, yung tinatawag na tina season na spring. Okay, the first point of Aries is named after the Aries constellation. Then we have the equinox and the solstice winter, spring, summer, or fall. Ito yun, no? We have autumnal equinox, winter solstice, vernal equinox, and summer solstice. Do you remember this? Have you studied this one? No? Others are saying yes, others are saying no. Okay? It's the moment in the year when the sun is exactly above the equator, and day and night are of equal length. Also, either of the two points in the sky were the ecliptic, the sun's annual pathway and the celestial equator intersect. Sige, I will ask you one thing. Renz, <clears throat> alin ang umiikot? Is it the earth or is it the sun? The earth? Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Now, we go to GHA or the Greenwich R angle. It's the angle, angular measure of the celestial body. From the Greenwich Meridian, also known as the Prime Meridian, okay, measured along the celestial equator. So Greenwich R angle, it is from the Greenwich Meridian, aka Prime Meridian. Increments, it is the addition, meaning yung dagdag doon sa degrees, minutes, and seconds. Increase or addition, especially one of a series on a fixed scale. Dagdag doon. So I have a paper that is about the increments. Okay, let me just do that. Yes. Increments and correction. Okay? You have it later. Then we have the LHA or the local R angle. Okay, calculated from your assumed longitude. Assumed longitude. Meaning rounded off. Kung ano yung longitude mo, it is rounded off. Adjusted by the GHA, it is the angle between the meridian of your assumed position and the meridian of the geographical position of the celestial body. Meaning, from your assumed position, latitude and longitude rounded off to the celestial position of that body, whether it is sun, stars, or planets, and even moon. Okay? Now we got the GHA of Aris. Aris has a GHA which changes second by second just the way the GHA of the sun does. To find the GHA of a star, it is necessary to first find the GHA of Aris. So meaning to say, bago ka mag-calculate ng GHA of the star or SHA of the star, you should have your GHA Aris first. <clears throat> this is the distance west from the Greenwich Meridian to Aris. Meaning, it is westward. The SHA measures west from Aris to the meridian of the star. Then we have the star hour angle. Yung sinabi ko kanina, star hour angle. Angle between the observer's meridian and the meridian of right ascension which passes through the star. Our angle runs from minus 12 to plus 12. Bakit? Kasi 24 hours. Stars with negative R angle, R angles are yet to transit the meridian. 
the SHA of a body on the celestial sphere is its angular distance west of the vernal equinox, generally measured in, in these degrees. No? Look at the representation. There's the right ascension, okay? GHA, SHA, LHA, declination, and then the polar distance, also the parallel of declination. Example. <clears throat> you have your greenish and then the longitude of the vessel, okay? And with that, from that uh, assumed position or assumed longitude going to the sun, you will have your LHA. Understood? Then we go to azimut. Azimut is the direction of a celestial object from the observer expressed as the angular distance from the north or south to the point of the horizon to the point at which a vertical circle passing through the object intersects the horizon. Meaning to say, ang azimut, basically that is the direction or bearing, okay? Altitude bearing of the celestial object. And you will use gyro compass with it, okay? Naintindihan? Mas magulo yung meaning niyan. But that is the direction or bearing of that celestial object. Now look, if you are here, and this is the star, azimut yan, yan. And you will use gyro compass. Siyempre, with the gyro compass, mayroong limit yan. Less than, dapat less than 45 degree angle. Kapag masyado mataas na, mahirap na. Hindi na siya masyadong accurate yung bearing. Okay? <coughs> Amplitude, oops, okay. Amplitude is the azimuth of a heavenly body when it is an observer's rational horizon. When you say rational, yun yung nasa uh, where, wherein the the horizon or the sea and the uh, skies meet. Yun yung rational horizon. The angle descent between the prime vertical circle passing through the east and west points kung saan nagra-rise at nagsiset ang sun. And the vertical circle passing through the body is called the amplitude of the body. Now look, uh, example is 32 north, okay? Meaning rising. The sun is rising, but that 32 degrees is measured from east first, going there. Hindi yung paganon. Malinaw? That is why when we talk about amplitude, Okay, the eastern and the western hemisphere is mentioned or written first before the north or the south. Kasi amplitude siya. Understood? Okay. Now, with the west 32 south, okay, meaning setting. Or kahit nandito yan, setting din yan. Kahit nandito, rising yan. Kasi we're talking about amplitude. Okay? Different siya sa azimuth. <clears throat> now we have the zenith and the nadir. This is your zenith. That is your nadir. Okay? The point of the celestial sphere that is directly opposite the nadir and vertically above the observer. Okay? Hello guys. Welcome Lights to off. my channel. So in this video, we will learn celestial navigation part 2 and this is very important video because I, I, have, I will cover a lot of important things in this video. So keep watching guys. So in my previous video, I had covered till declination, how to define declination. Now in this video, let us start with other topics that is GHA, LHA, SHA. SHA. So basically GHA or all any R angle, they all are taken measured from the celestial pole. Always remember this. They are always measured, they are the angle at the celestial pole or they are the arc at the equinoctial, always remember this. Now, as the word suggests green witch, so let me take a celestial meridian which is passing through the green witch uh, location on the earth. So, this red line you can see, this red line is passing through green witch. Now, let me bring the equinoctial. Now, this is an equinoctial. Of a celestial sphere. Now we know that this equinoctial is a great circle because it is passing through the center of the earth. So 
if I take a part of this equinoctial, then I can call it as arc. So we are now clear. What should we tell? We should tell arc for a part of an equinoctial. We can call it as arc. Now let me bring our celestial body on one of our celestial meridian. So this is sun. Now to define GHA, what I'll do is I'll take a part of an equinoctial because as you can see, this celestial meridian is cutting the equinoctial at 90 degree. So to define GHA, GHA, Greenwich angle of a celestial body is a arc on the equinoctial or it is an angle at the celestial pole contained between the red line that is called as a Greenwich line or you can see a celestial meridian passing through Greenwich and the other celestial meridian passing through the celestial body. So one is celestial meridian passing through Greenwich and the other is celestial meridian passing through the celestial body measured westwardly. So it's very simple. You never, you don't need to by heart this definition. You can derive the definition very simply. It is an arc on the equinoctial or the angle at the celestial pole contained between the celestial meridian passing through the Greenwich and the celestial meridian passing through the celestial body measured westwardly. So very simple. <coughs> now we will study what is LHA. LHA as the word suggests local, local R angle. Local means there is observer is there in this definition. Now let me bring the observer's eye. So this is the observer's eye. Now let me say that the observer is on this celestial meridian. Basically observer is on the earth but when I project the meridian of the earth on the celestial sphere this is how this meridian will look like. Now this is the meridian of the observer and this is the meridian of the celestial body. Now to define LHA what I will do it is the definition the starting of the definition is the same. So it is also measured westwardly. So to define it, it is a arc of the equinoctial or the angle at the celestial pole contained between the celestial meridian passing through the observer and the celestial meridian passing through the celestial body measured westwardly. So it's very simple from yellow line to the blue line. This is LHJ. And definition to define, you can just derive the definition, you don't need to by heart. So LHA is also very clear. Now, so now after completing LHA, now we will understand what is SHA. But before understanding SHA, we should understand what is first point of Aries and first point of Libra. So we will first focus on first point of Aries. Now this equinoctial you can see, this is a 2D diagram. Now let me make this equinoctial as a 3D. So this is how it looks like as a 3D. It is a great circle. Now and also I will make the path of a sun. So this is how the path of a sun. We know that the sun's <coughs> path is, it, it will go maximum, it will go 23 degree 26.5 minutes north and then it will come down and it will go come to the south. <coughs> this is how the sun travels basically. So now as you can see this is the equinoctial and this is the travel path of sun so the, it, it meets at one point so this point where the the sun and the sun's path and the equinoctial they intersect each other this point is your first point of Aries so now to define first point of Aries it is the point it is a point on the surface of a celestial sphere where the sun's path, this is the sun's path, crosses the equinoctial from south to north. This is what is first point of Aries. Always remember from south to north. Okay. And this is denoted by the term called as gamma. And at this point, the sun's declination is zero degree. So this was all about first point of Aries. Now this first point of Aries 
is on the 0, 0, 0 degree longitude or you can say a celestial meridian. But what if I take, I made it 180 degree, exactly behind this 0, 0, 0, there will be 180 degree and if I see on exactly from the behind, the point where this also intersects exactly from the behind, that will be called as first point of Libra. So let me show you how does it look like. This is how it looks like. Now from north, now it, the sun is going to south and this point where the celestial meridian is 180 degree, this point is known as uh, first, first point, point of Libra. Libra, it is denoted by Gamma. gamma. And to define first point of Libra, first point of Libra is the point on the surface of the celestial sphere where the sun's path crosses the equinoctial from north to south. So this is how it is defined. Now since we have understood what is first point of Aries and first point of Libra, now let us understand what is. So now we are very much clear with what is first point of Libra. Now let us go to our main topic that, that is SHA. Since we know what is first point of Aries, first point of Libra, now it's quite easy for us to understand what is SHA. SHA is sidereal hour angle and now you can see here this is Earth, this is Sun and this is Star. So the location of stars, stars are very far away from the Earth. That so is. if in this Earth I have this observer, so these stars are very very far from the earth as compared to sun. So if there is a change in the position of a sun, that means the GHA and declination. So if there is a change in position, the GHA and declination of sun will change appreciably. But because stars are very far away, the change in the declination and GHA is less as compared to the sun. And because of this, if you keep on uh, entering all the values of GHA and declination for all the stars, the nautical almanac will become bulky and very costly. So to eliminate this bulky and costly, what was did was there was introduction of SHA. SHA was introduced in almanac for stars. Now, what is exactly this is? Now, as you can see, SHA and declination for the stars, they are debuted in the nautical almanac for every three days. Because the change is less in the star's position, that is why they have not calculated for every hour every day. They have calculated for every three days. And they have taken only one star whose GHA they have taken for every day and every hour of GMT. So with the help of one star, we will be able to derive the GHA of all the other stars. So this will make uh, it less costly and it will make it less bulky. So this is the reason why SHA was introduced because of the stars. So as you can see in this nautical alumni, GHA of Aries it is for every day, every hour of GMT, but rest all stars you can see only SHA and declination are given and all these stars, for this all these stars, they are for only 3 days, 17, 18 and 19. So you can see this all are for total 3 days and GHA Aries is for every day, every hour of GMT. So now we 